it is 10 o'clock at night and we just left Soye and we are sailing back to Sacalobra. We are sailing upwind back around the corner to Sacalobra to enjoy a week on anchor in a more beautiful anchorage. And we still have some work to do, but we're leaving at night because we can. <laughs> But yeah, we had to run some errands in Palma today and pick up some spare bits from the hardware store and do some groceries and stuff. And that's just how long it took. But it's better to get out there at night than it is gonna be to leave in the morning with all the charter boats and try to jockey for anchoring positions uh, at 10 to noon in the morning. So we're just gonna head out there now. Should take us maybe two hours to get there. We are also realizing that our wind instruments don't work again. We have no uh, wind speed or wind direction from our masthead transducer, which means the battery's dead again. So at some point this week, we will be climbing up the mast again. But we don't need wind instruments. That's salty. <laughs> it's blowing a... Uh, Probably about five knots right now, we're sailing into it. So maybe six to, maybe six to seven knots apparent wind. We're doing three and a half through the water, so it feels like about right. Even though we're tacking six miles, which is gonna take us four hours. <laughs> everyone so last night we decided to leave Soye and sail six nautical miles back to Sacalubra the idea was that Sarah and Kim were going to drive over and meet us there with their RV but unfortunately when they got there they called us saying that they can't park in Sacalubra because there is a height limit of two meters which basically means no camping cars allowed because most Kempi cars are above two meters. So uh, instead, we decided to keep going another 17 miles to another beautiful place where we are right now. And the good thing is they get to park their RV here for free. So we're going to enjoy this lovely encourage for the next couple of days. We're going to work on the solar panel project. We're going to probably babysit a lot which I am not complaining because these kids are absolutely adorable and we're just going to enjoy being on the boat in this beautiful anchorage. Um, I think the plan is going to be we're going to mess around and see how much we can take off of it Yeah. and make it still open and then we're going to pull it off and pull it down below and start disassembling it so we can solder, glue, reassemble. I'm not and mount. Hopefully it'll get less rolly this afternoon. <laughs> oh, here we I put on the forward arm. Oh, it's blocking because it's under the arm. Then, then putting it together. Yeah. Whose great idea was it to do this project on a moving boat? When this was super swelly. Uh, who super who has a garage in Italy? Uh, we had a garage in Italy, but it was boring being inside in the garage after some time, so we did. We came here. <laughs> <laughs> look at the anchorage; it's beautiful. It's yeah, beautiful. look at that anchorage around us. It's, it's, it's really pretty. I mean. There's no denying that this is a very beautiful anchorage. Yeah. Awesome work. So. It's just uh, it's just a little bit on the swell side, I think, that's so. all. Yeah, but it's like it's more challenging, so the, the result would be better. Mm-hmm. Because it was more challenging doing it. Mm-hmm. Alright, I think the arms are Oh wait. Yeah. Have fun there. It's hot in here. Well, you guys are sitting on the wrong side of the fan. Yeah. 
And that fan is not reaching me, ever. Like, it's just stopping in the middle. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> oh my god, this is oh, so yeah. much better. Yeah. Oh damn, we're Where right were you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> and, then, and then just untie each. There you go. Ha! You got it first. I won. Ah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we didn't fold it. Ah, uh, we didn't fold it. There you go. There you go. Done. And lay over here. Oh look, we're done. <laughs> no, you're not. We were debating whether or not we were going to pull everything apart while it's hanging, but the boat is rocking quite a bit today. So we're going to just disassemble the rest sitting down because there are just the three panels now so we can just take the screws out one at a time and take the rest of the things apart. Yeah? So right? We, we don't need this invention. No. Anymore. Although it was very helpful, thank you again. Yeah, come back it up. <laughs> My one good idea today. <laughs> so we finished. Are we finished in what long did it take? Three hours? Three, Three hours. hours. One hour to just fiddle around with it outside. Two Last hours panel. Boom. Look go. at this. Yes. I just need to assemble everything again. <laughs> yeah. Demo always <laughs> is the fastest. Uh, yeah. It's the funnest too. High five. Yeah. Good teamwork. Yeah, what's happening tomorrow? I think you we and Sarah will to, take over. Yeah, yeah we'll sort it. We'll start with that. <laughs> and then we will start to bond everything together. Yeah. And when we've done that, uh, we need to reassemble everything. So we need your bar, right? I'll put that. Yeah. It's a genius bar. Mm. Hey! It's the genius bar. <laughs> <laughs> Apple's Doesn't gonna Apple sue have us. a genius bar? Yeah, that's what Apple's gonna sue us. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna turn yeah. like a 10 part series. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for follow to that bar. What's happening tonight? bath time for everybody. We have the generator running, we've got hot water on it, we've got the water maker running so that everybody on board can take a proper shower. Because uh, when was the last time you guys took a proper shower? Two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> like before you arrived. I really so need that. We got this <laughs> little kiddie me. pool for the beach like last week in Soy, and we're just going to fill it full of water so the kids can take a bath out here. Um, Kim's already showered, Kika's already showered. And then we can, rather than doing a sink bath like we did last time, Kim can cook while the kids bathe out here, so I think it'll be good. Are you excited for a shower, Aurora? Me. Me. A bath? A bath. Making dinner yeah. for the Uma crew. Yeah, so it's like an Italian dish made that's by a Norwegian, so that's a good combination. Yeah. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. This smells so much better. Well, this anchorage has turned out to be pretty swelly. It's beautiful, and the water's beautiful, and the surroundings are beautiful, and our friends have a really good spot to park the car, but every night the wind kind of shifts sideways, and then we're beam onto the swell, and so the boat just goes crazy because there's some big swell that comes in from the northwest, from mainland Spain, uh, and it's pretty exposed. It's just wide open to the ocean. So today there's a little bit of breeze and it's kind of coming from a favorable direction-ish. So we're gonna move the boat around to the other side of this peninsula, which is only about 15 miles, even though it's only about three kilometers that way. <laughs> so we're gonna sail all the way along this cliff and all the way down the other side. And then um, we'll continue on this solar project, hopefully in a more comfortable anchorage.
Well, right behind me is the northernmost tip of Mallorca. We're only about a mile away. And uh, the wind is doing some really weird, shifty things out here. So <laughs> we're still sailing at like one and a half knots downwind. And there's a catamaran up here that's also sailing downwind towards us. So the wind's definitely about to shift or do something. Uh, it should be interesting. We're still, we're still making a good time. We're, we're almost halfway there. It's a beautiful sunny day. The coastline is absolutely magnificent out here though. Um, we need to like, we need to like get up on that and start exploring more on land, I think. It's really pretty. Well, here's, here's the wind. As soon as we made it past the corner, the wind filled up. We are only a mile away from the anchorage, uh, so we're just gonna head a little bit further in and tack, and then we'll just go straight in. And as they say, we are coming in hot. All right, guys, we are going to try this one more time. I am so happy we moved yesterday because this is such a calmer anchorage. Then and I finally got a proper sleep last night, and this is going to be a much better place to work on the solar panels because it's not rolling all the time. Um, yeah, so then just left on the dinghy. <laughs> They're doing some like paddleboard adventure out here, but uh, yeah, then just left on the dinghy to pick up Kim and then they'll come back here and we'll get those solar panels put together and back on the rail. We need to connect all cables here. This is actually an SD card holder and it's like the smallest box we could find to actually close off the cables. And we're going to put this kind of nice goo in it. So we just isolate it all. And then we're going to cable it up. So I need to put the goo in the middle. And that's completely, completely sealed. And then this is completely goes sealed. So no we, room for yeah. leaks in here. No, 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 exactly. It's like double yeah. sealed. It's just like to have something to hold. What do you think of the plan, Dan? Uh, it's a plan. No, can I you think yeah, me? I think today I think today we're gonna be able to do all the soldering and wiring. Um, and then tomorrow start clamping and seca flexing them all together. Yeah. That's what I think. I am pre-soldering all of our leads so that we don't melt them into the panels later. But since I don't have three hands, I've uh, getting creative with zip ties <laughs> to hold the trigger down on the soldering iron. I'm just gonna give it a little haircut. This will never be straight, ever. <laughs> All right, let's squish. Nice. Nice. Uh, I don't know if this is against manufacturer recommendations or not, but WD-40 works really well for cleaning up most caulking, uh, and it makes like a nice smooth finish when it's done, and it even works well for like cleaning it off your fingers, cleaning tools, as long as it's still wet. Um, Probably better than acetone, especially on your bare skin. 
Um, but I have no idea if that's gonna like <laughs> void any kind of warranty. But on this prototype, I don't think it matters. That's the last panel to uh, seal the solder connection. So today we got all the soldering done and wired leads on and glued all the connections with Sikaflex. And that's about all we're gonna get done today. So hopefully by tomorrow that Sikaflex will be dry enough, cured enough, that we can glue and bolt all of the carbon frames back on to all the panels, let that dry overnight, and the next day we can start bolting the whole thing back together again. Just some fingers. Do you want that? This is kind of like from an art studio kind of concept. Yeah, love it. That was my joke. Bad, but it's good. <laughs> Today we just finished wiring all the panels together and we've tested them and we're getting like 60-ish volts out of each set of three, um, which is kind of tricky because there's sort of four different solar panels in this solar panel because when it's all closed, it still needs to have one sort of like active solar panel. Um, we just finished doing that and clean <laughs> cleaning up the wires, a lot of zip ties, but it's a prototype. And uh, now we're building a charge controller for it, which includes four charge controllers, one for each set of panels an inverter to power it, a Raspberry Pi so that we can see all the data coming yeah, out of it. This yeah, is mostly just the data harvest. Exactly. We're the charge controllers like, will work with or without it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. We're using like 2% of the power of this. Yeah, so this yeah. is just to like mine the data out of it so we can all watch it yeah. through the online cloud. Nice. And now we just need to take all of these wires and connect them to our little screw terminal down here because this is all the solar power coming in. Connect the fans, drop the little Raspberry Pi in there. Bam. Well, that's it? That's it. Fingers. It's the cables. What about the fingers? What's the cables. <laughs> there you go. We even put some uh, NASA grade anti-corrosion filament on it so that the aluminum doesn't corrode on our stainless. It's just duct tape. <laughs> but it is NASA grade, they use it. It's so. definitely NASA grade. Yeah. You can set it right here on the coffee pot. So. Not that we're actually getting ready to put it back up again. Now that everything's glued and everything's wired and everything's sigaflexed and everything's Loctited. And yeah. Everything's tested, and as far as we can tell from inside, it's good to go. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That thing's the Friday stuff. It's still the hinge stuff, I think. The carbon's twisting. Yeah. Because there's so much leverage on it, it's twisting. Like here, there's a bow in it. That is bending like crazy. And that's not, like, well, if the see, carbon bands, it's not a problem, it's made to bend. But also because this isn't, like, perpendicular, Yeah. it's bending, but it's bending, like, it's rotating, like, this way. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, it's twisting around that piece of carbon. Well, Kim is on the phone with an IT guy in Italy, uh, and we've connected the uh, Raspberry Pi in the charge controller to our Wi-Fi network on board so that they can start programming it mm -hmm. so that it can send all the data out from the charge controller through the internet so that everybody can monitor it off boat and they can like tweak it if they need to. So while he's working on the programming, uh, I'm finishing up the 
last cable connections to plug the solar panel into the charge controller box uh, by crimping these nice little waterproof plugs on. And then we should be good to go. The box is working, the inverter is working, the Raspberry Pi is on. <laughs> Apparently, we brought the wrong cable to connect to monitor, so we're using our projector to program it, which is kind of cool because we like programming on the chalkboard. Um, but I just have a few more crimps to make and then I can put these cables together and plug the solar panels in and then we can start actually seeing, making sure this actually works. Proper smoke test. We are online with uh, Isako, our IT guy. Uh, we have configured the Raspberry Pi to work together with MPPTs. So when it starts up, it just gives signal to the MPPTs to start up right away. And what is happening now, we have connected everything. And temporarily. <laughs> temporarily, yeah, it's obviously. You can tell by the cables running through the boat. <laughs> and then we're going to connect it to the solar panels for the first time. Well, the panels all have voltage and they're all connected and now we're just gonna go outside and plug them in and time for like a proper smoke test. And yeah, I mean, I'm 100% confident. Kim's 100% confident. So if this doesn't work, we're blaming the IT guy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it is definitely, a uh, current is coming in from the panels yeah. to the MPPTs and it's going through, but it's not transmitting its data. To okay, so question. So it's an IT problem. We're still Should drawing. We're still it. drawing a lot. I don't know if we'd be drawing. It's going to be hard to tell because we're running the water maker right now. Yeah, and it's vertical, so it's basically it shouldn't produce that much anyway. But we are. Going, oh, there we go. We are going to open the panels and prop them up because the little hardware store hinge doesn't have the structural integrity. And then we're going to connect all four panels and see if we can see a noticeable difference in the current coming into our battery bank. Um, just to see if the current, if, if they're actually charging. Because the problem right now is that the MP, like the, the panel's connected to the MPPTs, the MPPTs are connected to the batteries, but the data coming out of it into the Raspberry Pi, we can't see. We don't know what's happening. So we're gonna figure out a better way to know what's happening. So it is connected, and this is what the MPPT is writing. So it's the voltage, the voltage of the battery. So it is working, we just have to connect the, uh, the panels, and then we'll see if it's actually working. Yeah. Look, <laughs> there's no solar panel. Anywhere. Of our boat anymore. <laughs> it's been really cool to finally see the whole thing come to life. We've been working with Sarah and Kim for over two years on this project, and it's been really cool to just be part of the process of like seeing like the first models that they brought in Reykjavik, that plywood one, <laughs> and now having a working prototype come out of CAD and be born. And being developed yeah. in front of our eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's like a baby being born. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's a cat baby. <laughs> so this particular foldable solar panel project was inspired by mainly satellite designs and mm -hmm. how to use origami to deploy and extend the surface area to get more solar mm -hmm. into their system. So instead of a typical bifold panel where you only have two times the surface, the origami system means that it will have even more mm -hmm. surface, like three times or more. And because it's a modular system, the more solar you want, you just add more of these panels and you can have unlimited range, really. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is that it stores where it's at. You yeah. know, like when you have multiple folding panels or there's lots of stuff for RVs where you can like fold out a big set of um, thin panels, but then you have to fold them all back up again and then store them somewhere. And on a boat, storage is um, limited? Main, very limited <laughs> and it's the main concern for us. So mm -hmm. the idea eventually is that we're going to have two of these panels to replace our current panels. And so they're always going to be in their folded position while we're out sailing. Yeah. Um, and they're still going to be gathering a decent amount of solar similar to what we have now. But then when we anchor or on sunny days or on calm days, we can <laughs> extend our solar wings and fly. No. Um, and we'll be able to 
probably triple or almost quadruple the solar output that we would have once they're folded. So yeah. they're sort of a self-storing uh, solution, which is huge. The idea of this project is not just to be a solution for sailboats, but mm -hmm. it could be a solution for off-grid living, like tiny houses and, and key, little kiosks that need extra power or even food trucks mm -hmm. or RVs and camper vans. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why we decided to start testing it on a boat is because, well, the marine environment is the harshest environment out there. And if it works on a boat, it'll work anywhere else. Yeah, pretty much. That's the idea. It's going to be perfect for anywhere where real estate is limited. And so you need some sort of folding solution because mm -hmm. you can't just stick more solar like on the roof of your house, for instance. And what we just installed on this boat is very much a prototype. I think they already said that. Proof, but of, proof of prototype. It's very much just a proof of concept yeah. to see if this will survive a couple of weeks on the boat while the CAD engineering and all the engineers of the Levante team are working on like, a, like we call it the Model 1. Like a, yeah, a proper the, working model. The real, the first version. Yeah, the whole time we've been installing this, the, the whole month we've been installing this on the boat, they've had a whole team of engineers yeah. um, developing, like taking what we're learning as we're building it and developing that into the first like production run, mm -hmm. um, which is totally different. <laughs> right now we have just screws and bolts and eventually it will just be one integrated platform yeah. that you wouldn't have to screw anything Yeah, all together. the stainless steel, all the nuts and bolts, all that carbon fiber structure underneath, pretty much all of that is, is not going to be in the actual purchasable version. Yeah, it's going to be much more elegant, much more sleek, much more simple and user friendly. <laughs> and uh, we'll be testing this one for a couple of weeks. And in the meantime, the pre-orders for the workable model model one are mm -hmm. available. They're only going to produce a small batch for uh, this first round, round yeah. until they're able to scale the production. So if you do want to grab one and make sure you Make sure you act fast. We'll link everything in the description below. And if you want to get in touch directly with Kim and Sarah as well, we'll link their information down below. I'm sure you guys have a ton of questions that we probably can't answer. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, we're, we're just excited to have more solar. Uh, we haven't talked about it much because we haven't really come up with a fully functioning solution yet. But uh, ever since probably Svalbard, like ever since we were up in Norway, we've had issues with our solar. It's not really mm -hmm. producing what it used to. Uh, they are old panels. They were cheap panels. They're only like 15% efficient, and this panel is about 21 or something like that. So uh, we are working on solutions to get more solar on board because what we have really just doesn't work. One of our panels is damaged, I think. Um, we'll talk more about that in another video. Yeah. But we're just excited to like finally see this little child be born, this yeah. little solar panel baby. We're super excited. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, again, make sure you check out their website, and I guess until then, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.